Hey, welcome back, Banditos. I am Joe Marcello. I'm Orrin Phillips. I'm Mike Farah. And we are the Dollar Bin Bandits, and this is the Dollar Bin Bandits podcast, and we're bringing you a brand new episode. And today, we're bringing you our interview with the fourth, that's right, the fourth Ron to appear on the Dollar Bin Bandits podcast. We're talking to none other than Ron Garney. Now, uh, for those of you that may be familiar with him, uh, Ron Garney is pretty badass. Um, only guy that we've interviewed so far who mentioned, like, look, guys, I love talking to you, but I got to teach a jujitsu class at five o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So um, cool guy to talk to. He is the artist on the current uh, comic book Berserker, uh, which is co-written by Keanu Reeves. And if you've not had a chance to read it, I suggest you go check it out. It is, it's really, really good. Yeah, Ron is an absolute blast to talk to. And there's such an intensity in his art. And I think you could see that in his personality as well. Uh, wonderful guy, wonderful artist. And uh, it was just so cool to be able to talk to him. Yeah, definitely getting some rock star vibes from Mr. Garney. Um, he did a couple of great runs uh, of some of my favorites, uh, Captain America. I think with uh, Mark Wade and uh, he did some Hulk, which I really appreciated because he has that kind of energy to his art and always drew the Hulk with like these beady eyes and you could get the rage from him. Um, and so you'll probably hear me talking about that uh, in this interview. So let's get to it. The man of the hour, Ron Garney. Uh, I'm going to ask the first question that we ask all of our guests. How did you first uh, discover comics? Um, so we're recording now? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, probably like the same way most people did, you know, when you're young, kind of get them, you know, they get brought home for you to read. And, uh, I was a huge fan of the Batman TV series when I was a kid, you know, um, until I realized just how stupid it actually was, <laughs> you know, later on. <laughs> But as a kid, I was really drawn to, um, believe it or not, I was drawn to the, the uh, comic Biff Bam Pow, the big lettering and the, you know, comic booky looking things flying across the screen. I was always drawn to that. So I always, I liked reading comics when I was very young. Once I got a little older, I forgot all about them. Um, I was, you know, into sports and girls and music and you know all kinds of other distractions and um but i did kind of stay interested at one point in uh creepies and eeries and uh those things those kinds of things because i was getting stacks of i lived in a very recluse area up in connecticut northwestern corner it was a very small town and didn't have access to stores and things so it didn't come regularly, but, you know, I remember a guy who was a friend of my family's coming over with a stack of those things. And so I read some of that, but like I said, I had kind of forgotten about them. And then I went to, I, I was in college and, um, and then when I was in college, my, I was bartending as a way to get myself through college and a bartender. It was my, like my last year of college, actually 84. And um, bartender had a secret wars comic behind the bar. And, uh, it was Zach and, uh, you know, Jim Shooter and, and uh, it was about the Beyonder and all the heroes were on this asteroid fighting, you know, the, the super being put them all there like little action figures to fight each other. And I, it sort of whisked me back and I thought it was just fascinating. And I had gone to school for illustration and photography and psychology. And, um, and I, but I did have in, an interest in maybe doing, getting into movies and storytelling because I like storytelling. And uh, here, all that was in, in a short form of it. And I had forgotten about them, but I, you know, once I opened them, I'm like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. Plus I went to school for illustration. So I thought, wow, I never even thought about doing this for a living. Um, so I, I kind of got hooked into it then. And so I went down to the 24 hour store where the other bartender got the, the, the books from and uh, asked the guy back there, I said, how do you get into this? And um, so he pointed at the shelf and there was a Marvel tryout book. They had these oversized books back then called the Marvel tryout book. It was a contest that they were having to see, uh, you know, to sort of um, look for talent. 
and um, you had a deadline, you had to enter it by, and they gave you full size sheets of Bristol board with uh, John Romita Jr. penciled uh, Spider Man story in there to ink. And then you could also pencil from the script that they had in there. So you had to follow the script and then pencil, you know, just like JR had done. So I did everything. I colored, I did the coloring section, I did the penciling and the inking section, and I sent it in like the day before the deadline. <laughs> so I probably didn't get there on time anyway. But I didn't get in, obviously, and um, uh, Mark Bagley won it. Um, but it lit a fire under me, you know, I got that letter, a rejection letter. But the thing that was interesting about that is I got the rejection letter. But I still, it still motivated me even more because I actually got a letter from them. You know, I don't know why that made such a big deal to me, but I was like, oh, they actually sent me a letter. So I knew, you know, when you're, you know, back then it seemed like such a, mech, you know, like, like this lofty place, you know, like Oz or something, you know, to get into Marvel, work for Marvel seemed so large to me at the time. Um, but it motivated me. And uh, so I just kept that in my samples. And, and uh, in the meantime, I found out that Mike Zek, the guy who had drawn Secret Wars, the book I happened to pick up, uh, he lived right down the road from me, <laughs> uh, you know, so it was, uh, that was really weird because he could have lived anywhere in the world, but he lived down the road, basically six minutes from my house. Uh, so I looked him up in the phone because the guy told me, he said, I think he lives in West Haven, this guy. I'm like, what? So I looked him up and there he was. So I called him up, left him a message on his voicemail, uh, his answer machine. And he called me back. I didn't expect he would, but he called me back and told me I could send him some samples through the mail, which I did. And then, um, yeah, so he was, he called me back and gave me some pointers on my work. And then, um, you know, over the course of a couple of years, he was coming into my bar and I started playing volleyball with him and a bunch of other people. And, and then he brought me into Marvel and that was it, you know, Marvel and DC. So, and that was 30 something years ago. <laughs> and here we are talking to you guys hey you know <laughs> natural progression obviously exactly. <laughs> we like to say we're sort of you, you know three a mild... handsome devils. oh <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh you flatterer <laughs> stop you're our oh, favorite guest get out <laughs> oh come on <laughs> we like hey, to say what? we're a milestone for any comic professional so i'm glad you're here <laughs> <laughs> We're part of your origin story now. Yeah, exactly. See, um, so we're going to be just kind of hopping around your career here, uh, but sure. uh, I wanted to start with um, Sentinel of Liberty with yes. uh, Captain America. Yeah, so that was um, one. You know, I, I don't know how you consider. It. I, I consider it for you at least one of your big breakthroughs um, at really? Marvel. Um, well, I, I, I say that in terms of you know what maybe my perspective on and what what i got from it which you know it was the second on it was an ongoing uh for captain america and um you did it with mark wade and you know i'm just curious like um if you know sort of the background if you're just kind of assigned it like what how, how it came together how they decided there were going to be a second one and how was it going to be distinguished from the well it's not first one? Um, yeah it's not uh not the romantic story you're looking for probably but um it uh happened because at the time well right before that um as you recall uh, the first caps book i was working on with wade the original book was taken yeah. you know taken away and sent to rob liefeld and jim lee um which was a shock a little bit but it, you know from a business point of view, I was like, okay, I get it because of how much money those guys you had brought in some years earlier. Uh, so the, you know, the stockholders and stuff, they don't understand the creative aspect of it. They just saw the, you know, the dollar signs for, for the most part, even though Mark and I were, you know, raising the viewership on the title, but it wasn't enough to justify not giving it that big jump that Rob or, you know, Jim might've brought in. So uh, so it went over there for a year or so, about a year. And then they asked us to come back on it. Um, and they made, you know, in the meantime, they made me, you know, they offered me source, whatever I wanted to do, which was surfer. Uh, but then I agreed to come back to, to cap. Um, so what ended up happening was, 
Yeah, I didn't, it's hard to explain. So I was on that book for not that many issues when we came back. And in the meantime, Mark was working with Andy Kubert on Kazar, I think. And Andy really wanted to draw a cap, I think. And, you know, Bob Harris, I think, was the editor in chief. And, you know, and it was pretty tight with them. And, and I know Mark wanted to work with Andy and stuff. And so they, they wanted to do the spinoff title. So they offered me that to co write it with Mark and draw that. And I originally didn't want to um, because of all the politics and the drama that had surrounded Cap originally, you know, Rob and Jim and everything else. Right. But, you know, I was like, what the hell sure you know and actually they took me off it took me off cap and said i had no choice so i was really at a crossroads at that point whether i was going to leave my contract or not but um ever the professional i decided to stay with my contract at marvel and i, I agreed to do it and then um yeah so i loved doing the world war ii stories i'm a big retro fan fan doing a, i'm a fan of doing retro stories and world war ii in particular has you know, say what you want about the war. I mean, the horrors of it. I mean, from a design standpoint, there's a lot of really cool stuff to draw, you know? So um, I was into it more for that reason. And I did, I was sort of a World War II buff. And um, so it kind of, uh, you know, checked some good boxes for me. Um, and it was fun while I did it, you know, but it wasn't long lasting, but, um, you know, so that's basically how it happened. I have a question for you that, you know, you have a very distinct style. When did you find the confidence in yourself as an artist to go with your own style or was it always there? Man, I, I feel like I need like 3D glasses or something with that wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, I feel like I'm in Vegas, like <laughs> Vegas or something. Um, so how did I hook into my cap style? Or just your, your style in general? Like, when did you feel oh. confident as an artist to do mm. as you felt? Well, I've always experimented. And, I, you know, I, I'm i not somebody who likes to get... I mean, my style's changed a lot. I don't know if you've noticed that from book to book, I'm always experimenting. And I try to bring something unique to each character I'm working on. You know, when I did Surfer, it was vastly different from uh, what I did on Ghost Rider, for instance. Um, so... Uh, I, I get restless. I don't, when I settle into, you know, and I'm, I'm more, I wouldn't say impatient, but I'm restless. And I like the adventure of trying different things in the work. Um, my berserker stuff is completely different than, you know, stuff I did on Cap or Hulk or, you know, any of these things. Um, so, uh, but the confidence just came through, um, I mean, I was always able to draw when I was a kid, so I kind of came into it uh, confident, but it was an eye-opening experience and very humbling to see how many great guys were out there, you know? Um, so I really had to buckle down and find a, a place in between being proficient, uh, dependable, and yet being good at the same time, which requires a lot more focus and time. Um, so I was, you know, it was really tough for me for the first bunch of years because that editor was breathing down my neck, you know, well, oh, where's those pages? Where's those pages? You know, um, literally every day when I started, like I'd get a call every day from the editor. It was driving me crazy to the point where I finally said, look, I said, you got to stop doing this. You're, it's counterproductive. I can't work. If you're constantly, you know, I need to get stuff done, but you're making me stressed, you know, and I can't work like that. So uh, he backed off and I was there, you know, and I got into a good rhythm where I developed a, a way where I could keep on time. And, um, but it just was through trial and error. And um, eventually what really did it for me was finally biting the bullet and inking my own work as well and coloring some stuff. And because it's never fully you when you've got someone else inking, you know, um, you would never tell Charles Schultz have someone else ink peanuts or you know or Gary Larson you know would never be Gary Larson if somebody else was inking the far side you know so there's character you bring to your own lines um, and once I was able to do that you know and just I just shed all the, that stuff and just decided to do it all myself that's when I felt the most comfortable 
you know. Um, but the confidence just comes through trial and error, you know. I can look back at stuff and stuff I thought was good, I look back in horror at, you know. I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's god awful. You know, I want to blow it up on the screen if I see something on, you know, comic art, like an old sketch I did or something. I'm like, oh God, I want to buy it back and burn it. But, um, you know, so it just, it never ends. I don't think anybody's should ever say they're too confident because then, you know, you stop growing. You should always be a little, uh, always question your work. It's, it, you know, the journey is more important than, than the destination. I don't want, I don't look at it as I'm going to be, reach this point where I'm, you know, the best I can be. To me, it's, well, I obviously want to be the best I can be, but, you know, I want it to be about the journey and the learning and, you know, never being comfortable with how my stuff looks. So um, I'm confident, but at the same time, I look at it as an adventure and uh, a mystery to try to keep doing different things with it. So, makes sense. Uh, over your career, I know you've been, you've done a fair amount, obviously, for Marvel, but um, you did a, a bit for, uh, for DC, specifically yeah. on JLA. Um, right. What was that experience like for you? Um, uh, well, I was only there for a couple of years, so I loved Mike Carlin. You know, I've always, I've always, I've known him for a long time, uh, and I had never worked for DC at that point. But I knew I needed a change. I'd been with Marvel for a bit, you know, um, and uh, they offered me Superman. My contract was up with Marvel, and so that was the book that's always eluded me. I never got to draw that book. It was my favorite character, um, Superman, Surfer. Uh, and uh, so they offered me Superman, but then when I got there, they kind of bait and switched me and asked me to do JLA instead. And I was like, oh, because I hate doing team books <laughs> because I can't bring, I, I like taking one character, bringing something unique to the visual. Like when I did Daredevil, you know, I approached it with a um, thing in mind where every page the way I drew it looked like we were looking through Matt Murdock's blind but radioactive eyes you know so with the colors and the way I was leaving out line work and trying to make your eye fill in the forms was through the whole book was something I was trying to approach it with but I couldn't do I can't do that as well well really at all with team books because each character has its own their own specialties or their own uniqueness and to do a team book you have to do all of them and it, you can't mix and match all these different sort of techniques that way it's not it's really kind of impossible i mean you could but it'd take you forever i guess it'd be a fun experiment um so basically that's what happened uh you know so i agreed to do it you know um mike kind of pressured me into it and uh that's a book i i inked myself on for the first bunch of issues um and that was a learning curve too, an experimental thing, you know, by the end of it, I was, you know, my style, you can see my style really changing on that as well. And then Dan Green took over the inks. Um, but that was only a two year gig. And then at that point, um, Marvel came calling again and offered me Spider-Man. So how could I turn that down? You know. So do you have a desire to go back to DC at some point and play in their sandbox? Uh, well, they offer you Superman. Yeah, they'd have to let me do whatever the hell I wanted with it. I don't, you know, I'm not, uh, the, the companies are in these we in this weird place now where I, you know, um, that I think um, they're struggling to find unique stories to tell. I mean, without it being, um, well, to be perfectly frank, I think things have gotten so political everywhere that it's hard to um, enjoy stories just for story's sake. But you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's why I love adventures so much. So, because, you know, for me, part of the fun of doing a comic book is the escape. Uh, you know, obviously, people are going to, you know, draw from real life situations and things like that. But I think it's gotten to a point where it's too much now and we've sort of lost sight of what they're supposed to be about, which is the fun escape and not, you know, and, you know, and let people bring unique creativity to the book. That's not a derivative of somebody else's sort of viewpoint or, 
um, you know, or angry sort of attack on this particular person or that or that group of people or, you know, I'm not into that crap, you know, I don't want to hear it. So I want to do adventures and, and have fun, have it be an escape. So that's, I'd have, they'd have to let me do whatever I wanted with the book and then I would do it. So. <laughs> Um, oh, you had, you, you've had uh, a number of collaborations with uh, Mark Wade and on uh, you know Captain America on uh, Hulk. Um, right. I'm just curious, you know, what um, when you find a good collaborator like that, what 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 makes it um, what makes it special? Like what 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 is what is so good about you guys coming together? Uh, <laughs> well, honestly, the the less you talk to each other, the better. Well, no, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm like, okay, no, I'm, just I'm joking. Um, what makes us a good? I don't know, man. That's a hard one. You know, I've had good collaborations. Um, yeah, that's a tough question to answer because they're all different personalities. You know, um, I'm me, but they're all different personalities. Jason Aaron. Uh, but they're all they were all great writers you know everybody yeah. worked you know I, I loved you know most of them i can't think of anybody i haven't enjoyed um and, oh, there's one actually but um yeah i mean they're all I, I think when you have a good product um it's always easy to get enthusiastic about it you know i i'm i have to read their product and read their story and if i find it interesting and good it makes it life easier for me and so it makes my work better um you know um and i'm very um one of my tenets of, of of being a comic book illustrator is is making sure that i'm i'm doing justice to the writer's story i i you know as much as i have opinions about how the market has become a little bit too dominated by, you know, writer centric. Uh, I do, uh, I'm very conscious of the fact that that's their craft and I respect it. So um, out of that respect, I do the best job I can at bringing what they have put on the page to life the best I can. And so that might be a reason why, you know, I've been asked for i don't know i don't know if i've been asked for but i end up with these people um uh, but i do think that contributes to what can make it a good product you know i've seen i remember talking to mark wade and i it told this story not too long ago to someone else uh he had showed me a script he had for some he was doing a book at image or something or a story at image and he showed me the script and he showed me what the penciler turned in and there was nothing of what he put in i mean very it was just bare bones of what he had written and the guy the artist just left a bunch of stuff out in lieu of just putting in big big shots that really didn't do any justice to his story at all and i you know i i was actually shocked by it and i actually you know and and i was on his side about it you shouldn't you know you need to that's what this business is and you need to respect their craft the way they need to respect yours as long as there's mutual respect um i've got no problem with with it um you know i think that's what helps it become a good collaboration you know personalities aside that doesn't mean anything you know what means something is you can have the you know whatever personality you want the, but are you doing good work is the work true to the story is the story true you know good for the art uh, you know, is it a good mix, good, you know, good marriage there? Um, that's the important thing. So um, I think, you know, maybe that's why I, you know, it's a tough question to answer. I've enjoyed all of my, you know, the last one I did with Fabian uh, Juggernaut. I love Fabian. He's a great guy. We've known each other for years and I love the story he wrote. It was just a lot of fun to do, you know, and he was very conscious of leaving me room and putting in shots that I, you know, that he thought were good for my strengths and i agreed with most of them um, and that's where the writers come in is when they try to write to your strengths and i know that matt kent working with keanu and matt um they're trying to do that for me as well i know that they try to find ways after looking at my work and seeing what i come up with with what they write looking for ways that um uh, 
point to my strengths in the writing, you know? So a, a good writer is conscious of the artist and the artist should be conscious of the writer and there should be that mutual respect. Yep. Hope I didn't bore you guys with that long winded. No, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like it boils down to respect. I think so, you know, I mean, yeah, I think you have to communicate, you know, you don't have to talk every day or anything, but you should communicate. There was one writer I did work with, and this is the one I brought up that I didn't, I never heard from him, not once, not one hello, not one how are you, not one over, over, over a year on a book. And that I found egregious, you know, I found it unprofessional, you know, you should be professional. Yeah. You know, I don't care what you're fucking, you know, you can think you're Orson Welles or, or you know, or Howard Hughes and walk around your house with Kleenex boxes on your feet for all I give a fuck about, but you should be uh, respectful and professional with the person you're working with. Don't look down on, as if you're here and, you know, everyone else is, once people separate themselves like that, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a signal that they have a superior thing in them, you know, um, you can say, oh, it's, you know, it's just their way. No, fuck you. This is the business you're in. You know, you should respect the people you work with and you should, you know, even if you don't like the, what the person's doing, um, give them the courtesy of communicating and saying hello and the respect of saying, hey, could you try something like this on the book? You know, because it's, the artist myself i'm putting a lot of time in and i'm have i have respect for your work and i'm showing you respect by putting things in that and more i try to put in more you know to add more to their story so um i do think that's uh, something that um, is a bad thing any if any writer were to do, to do that so so um we want to probably transition into a berserker but i think i have a question or at least a topic okay. that 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 may transition really well which is uh your work on hulk which i really enjoyed um and i just thought there was like a lot of um you know very dynamic uh you know intensity to that um yeah. i don't know if i have a question but uh one particular part that i noticed from uh hulk that i really liked and i want to see if it was you know intentional and you got it is the eyes Whenever you had you drew Hulk, <laughs> is that you never had an iris? It was uh, it was always just a beady eye, and that like conveyed so much yeah, rage. It's funny, I knew I yeah. I, somebody else had mentioned that to me once. Did you? Oh, really? Okay, I yeah, thought it was, it was original. It was deli <laughs> no, it was deli I, you know, they said I always gave the Hulk crazy eyes, and that was deliberate. You know, he should just be the Hulk. So, yeah, he's the Hulk, and. You know, and I didn't realize how much I was doing it, but it just, you know, I, I really, every ounce of me wanted to just channel insanity in the monster, you know? Yeah. Um, so every little visual cue I could, you know, I, I put in there, um, you know, uh, I, when I got the chance to do it, I jumped at it, you know, when I was offered it, you know, and it was actually right after Cap after Sentinel Liberty. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And then Bobby Chase called me up and offered me Hulk. I was like, yes, you know, because that, who doesn't wanna draw the freaking Hulk, you know, yeah. the big giant green monster. And then she she asked me who I wanted to work with. And I said, oh, I don't even know. And then I happened to know John Byrne. He didn't live far from me. And I knew he did a seven issue Hulk that he never got to finish years earlier. Didn't do too much with it. So I asked him, I said, hey, would you be interested in drawing the Hulk? I mean, writing the Hulk, uh, you know, they offered it to me. And so we jumped on board and then that was a disaster. So, um, <laughs> um, because of, uh, for a variety of reasons, not between him and I, but, you know, he, he and the editor. And so, uh, but yeah, um, there were just so many fun things to do with that character. It didn't matter what it was. I mean, it just, you know, I just wanted to channel every bit of rage I could into him and uh, make him overblown musculature, you know, just so crazy, you know, when you looked at him. And I wanted to just feel the weight of his frame and his bones and his everything. So that was an easy one to get into. Mission accomplished. Glad you <laughs> I will say, yeah. <laughs> Took that one. 
<clears throat> well, uh, I- I'm asking you about Berserker because I fucking love it. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> Go. That's it. Just, that's that's my tea up. <laughs> um, how did you get involved with this? Uh, it, you know, it was weird. I I was working on Juggernaut, and um, so I, my contract was coming up at Marvel. Now, I had been with Marvel, you know, aside from the two years at DC for over thirty years probably 31 years at this point. And um, so I, I knew I was coming to an end and for a lot of the reasons I was mentioning before, just the direction it was going. And it just, uh, you know, so um, I knew I wanted to just do something else and, and move out on my own, possibly doing my own book. And I just wasn't sure. I knew I, maybe I wanted to retire. I wasn't sure, but I knew I wanted to do my own thing from now on. And I didn't want to work on any other writer stories. If I was going to do it again, I wanted to work on my own. And then I got an email from Boom Studios and they said, uh, hey, you know, this is so-and-so from Boom, Philip from Boom, you know, who I've spoken with in the past long ago. Uh, and he said, we're just wondering if we could talk to you about something. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, he said, give me a shout. So he called me up. He said, so listen, we're doing this book with Keanu Reeves. And I'm like, oh, the movie star, you know, and uh, okay. And uh, and he really loves your work. And I'm like, <laughs> well, slow down. What? You know, I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm, uh, I didn't kind of believe it. I just assumed it was. You know, was, he was putting his name, offering his name, you know, Keanu Reeves, this or that, but he was just, you know, out doing his thing and Boom was, run, you know, kind of the way, uh, I don't know, like William Shatner had a book, I think, at Marvel for a bit or something, but, you know, I don't know how closely tied to it he was going to be. So I said, well, I didn't hear that from him, you know, but, uh, you know, he goes, oh, well, you know, uh, well, can we at least talk to you about it some more? And, you know, um, and I'm like, yeah, sure. I, you can talk to me. But in my head, I was like, I'm not going to do it. You know, I didn't want to get tied down again. So uh, they we scheduled a Zoom meeting, much like this one. And um, it was Wednesday at one o'clock, I remember. And I pressed the Zoom button, ding, ding. And there's Keanu Reeves staring at me. <laughs> so he's like, Ron. I'm like, hey, Keanu, you know. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> did he say what? And the other guys from Boom were there. Matt Kent was there, you know, and uh, and we started talking and joking around. We got we kind of hit it off right away, you know, um, uh, making each other laugh. <clears throat> and they told me the thrust of the story. Now, unbeknownst to me, this book had been going on for a while. I didn't even know about it because I don't really follow much of what's going on in the industry, you know, per se. You know, because I'm just busy doing my thing. You know, four children. You know, I do other things. Once I'm done working, I kind of just do my thing. So, um, so I'd been going on for a while, and they talked to me about it, and you know, gave me the the pitch. And then the you know, and the financial guy was there. You know, there's all these. You know, I got a call from him, and you know, working on some kind of deal. You know, all this stuff. So. But they they said, well, if you decide to do it, you know, get back to us. Let us know if you want to do it. You know, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll let you know. And <laughs> but I'm going to say no to Keanu freaking Reeves staring at me. You know, it was like, uh... so um, it was uh, it was pretty trippy at first. Um, but you know, he was asking me questions of how much feedback he could give me, and um, you know, and. Uh, so we worked it all out and then I, you know, and I was ready to go. Um, you know, I wrapped up Juggernaut and then uh, got the contract negotiations sort of, they were, I started it while I was in the middle of the contract, you know, on good faith uh, because I knew how behind the eight ball they were. And this book had been in production for a while and they had this big Kickstarter and I had no idea about what a Kickstarter, you know, I never used a Kickstarter. I didn't really know that much about it. You know, I come, you know, I'm almost 60 years old. I don't pay much attention to a lot of these things. So they told me about it and uh, I knew that they were stressed out about getting it done. So I was like, okay, man, I'm in and I'll, I'll take care of this for you. So boom, I got to work and um, I got it done, you know. Um, 
and the first book launched in March. So it's been a real great story. Really enjoyed it. I mean, it seems like the people that run Boom Studios are having fun doing what they're doing. They're still at that stage, yeah, now where they're not too big, you know, where like Marvel and DC, sometimes you get too big, too corporate, you lose your soul. Yeah. I mean, it's no longer the guys running the company who are like family members who together who are, you know, they're in it together and they have, you know, the right ideas and it's a creative sort of force. And, you know, then it goes corporate and it becomes too big and it, it loses that. You know, so I, they're still at that stage, and hopefully, yeah, I, it's good that they're growing. I just, you know, I hate to see that happen to any company, you know, and that's they're they're doing good stories, you know. Yeah, so. I mean, they have all the great IP, mm-hmm. you know, from like our childhood and beyond, and they um, they're just doing it right, it seems, and they, you know, they bring them together too, like they're they're taking. Teenage Mutant, Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers combine them in a story, which is bananas. Same thing with like Transformers and Ghostbusters and like all these, you know, properties. And they're there's absolute just fun. Yeah, that's what so. it needs to be, you know, for sure. I know they're, they're a great bunch of guys to, uh, you know, I don't talk to them too much. Um, talk to the editor whenever I turn stuff in, you know. Um, and uh, but getting to know them to the extent I have, they all seem like a great bunch of guys, you know. Um, it was a little weird at first working things out, trying to get to know, you know, working with you know people. But um, there's always an adjustment period. Uh, but right now it seems to be a smoothly running engine, um, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great. I mean, it's there's you know I collect comics obviously, but you know, they, you just know what comes out on a week to week basis, but there, this is one of a few that I look forward to every Wednesday. And I'm like, Oh, is is it this Wednesday? Is it this Wednesday? Oh, what is that? Oh, look at that. These are the original pages. How about that? That's cool. Treat for you. huh? That's a Thor painting I did. Um, Look at, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is all the first issue. So you get to see like oh. close. <laughs> it's very uh, violent. It is. <laughs> now, are they are they really? Um, at least when I remember, this was first announced. It was going to be a comic, and then at some point, it was going to be a movie as well. Is that still a, a thing? Yeah, it it's, uh, got picked up by Netflix already, um, so it's going to probably start production within a year. The guy who's doing the new Batman movie with um, that kid from Twilight, um, he's... Uh, Matt Reeves. Oh, that guy. Who? Well, that's the guy. Matt Reeves is the director? Uh, no. I, don't, I don't know if that's his name, but, um, but he's the one who's writing it. He's going to be writing oh, okay. it on the screen for, the, for Netflix, for the series, uh, movie. Um, so, and then it's going to be uh, an animated series as well. So, uh, yeah, it launched right, you know, we launched it and within a month it was already announced it was going to, it got picked up by Netflix. So it was pretty nice. <laughs> Family friendly animated movie, I'm sure. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, Keanu's got a lot of ideas about, you know, he, he's more of a, you know, I kind of tried to tell him to you know not let it go too crazy you know because you I, i'm of the belief you have to have a foundation for every character that makes the character what it is and you know you can't let people take it in so many different directions that it loses what it actually is i mean you know frank Lloyd wright would never build a house on toothpicks you know his houses are built a certain way that I de- have a foundation that that is true to, to his art form. And I feel like characters are that way. You have to stick with, you have to have a foundation there. And if you go off and just let everybody do all these different things and it just becomes this person's idea, you know, there's, you should always stick to some foundation and then go off of that. 
but I know that he has this idea of letting people do whatever they want with it. And I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, but it's his character. So, <laughs> you know, I have a tiny stake in it, but it's his, it's his, it's his baby. So, um, so I don't know what the animated series is going to be yet. And I know that he likes different art styles. Um, so I, I know he likes anime. It's going to be an anime thing. Mm. So that should be neat. Should be really it's cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah. You answered my question, but I was just going to see, was there any uh, growth or growing pains with working with someone who's not in the industry with what their expectations are as to, you know, what you what you guys do? Uh, I'm not following you. Growing pains? like Well, just, you know, when you're working with someone who's not in the comic industry, and you, yeah, all, you mean yeah yeah you know some of the expectations are you know like he was just, actually you know the thing with him is he was remarkably he's he's a very gifted guy mm -hmm. um we've talked quite a bit um in my conversations with him uh you know i see how insightful he is um he's a natural storyteller uh, obviously all these years of movies you learn to be a good storyteller um so he kind of it was a natural it sort of smoothly fit right and he works very closely with matt kent you know when they're writing the stories together and matt and you know matt sort of his scribe and kino acts out all you know everything he wants and so he's acting these things out for matt he was acting for me one time on skype you know a john wick scene which was funny because it was a martial arts scene and he knows i'm a black belt in jujitsu so he was showing me all these movies that it was pretty trippy pretty fun <laughs> so um yeah, so he works closely with Matt and, um, you know, so it's a it's a, an interesting mind meld of between the three of us, really, at this point, but mostly with Matt and Keanu. Mm -hmm. Matt does a great job scribing what Keanu's thoughts are and Matt adds his flavor into it and gives him ideas and where it could go. And so it's been an interesting collaboration between all of us. And then Bill Crabtree does great colors and Clem does great uh, you know the lettering is great by Clem Robbins. I I'm remiss in giving those guys a shout out. <clears throat> so um, yeah, they're all great. Awesome. Sorry, I had on mute. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you guys fought. I look over. You guys like. <laughs> no, 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 no. I had. Uh, oh, I no, no, we were looking to our. <laughs> I was starting to talk, and my mic thing came up, said you're muted. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway so that was, um, that was interesting the three are just like i was like uh he's talking about keanu what do we do yeah we were giving um, you a long keanu pose uh yeah, really. yeah. Whoa. The funny um, thing about keanu like one time uh like i had done men of wrath i don't know if you knew about men of wrath this book i did with jason aaron it was a creator on book yeah. jason aaron and i had done and it got picked up by Paramount and, all, and then it kept falling, you know, the deal kept falling through. And so Robert De Niro even made us an offer on it. But anyway, I sent it to Keanu, or Keanu read it. And uh, it's funny because he said, yeah, I read Men of Wrath. I'm like, oh yeah, he goes, and he goes, it's really violent. <laughs> and I thought it was hilarious considering how violent Berserker is, you know, that he thought Men of Wrath was really violent. Because Berserker's off the hook, violent. As he just finished you know, John wants, Wick three. What's that? After he just finished John Wick three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that poor guy is so drained all the time. Anyway, like so go ahead. What was your question? Well, I just you know I I know you you obviously you have Berserker ongoing right now. Um, yeah. What do you have next, or do you have do you have anything else lined up after that? I don't. You know, I've got about another probably year on berserker so i'm not thinking of, i mean i thought about it actually a couple of days ago i was thinking what am i going to do after it but you know i i don't know yet you know that's something i'll see what happens when it happens um, i do know that the movie will be made and i would like to get involved in that somehow um, my whole dream was to jump into movies i worked on movies before i worked on i am legend with will smith got to meet him um, really hang out with him a little bit um yeah, I was the costume illustrator for that movie. I, was, I just helped design the zombies and everything. Um, so that was fun. So I have some experience in it and working with Keanu and I'd like to get into, you know, maybe transition to maybe even assistant directing because there's so much storytelling experience. And, you know, I had mentioned that to Keanu even and he said something about cinematography because he likes the way I do 
you know, sweeping vistas of the landscapes and things like that, you know, so we'll see what happens. I'm not sure yet. If you ever need a video editor, I know a guy. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> got a lot of experience with Vivid. <laughs> The um, that is. Pornhub has a reduced uh, <laughs> membership. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you, should, you know, I always wanted to start a bar and call it Horn Pub. <laughs> <laughs> the same colors and everything on their, their logo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never really wanted it. People would be like, what? Horn Pub. Uh, anyway. So we want to be mindful of your time, obviously. Yeah, I got to wrap it up soon, sadly. Uh, you know, that's but, uh, quite all right. So before we go, I just wanted to ask, where can people... Uh, you know, if you have social media, can they follow you? Where can they see your artwork? Yeah. All that good stuff. Well, Instagram has been great. You know, um, I like Instagram because it's like the equivalent of a live musical performance in a way. You know, part of the problem with the comics industry for years was that nobody had, we didn't have access to fans and fans didn't really have access to us, you know, before the internet and which, you know, has a lot of bad to it, but there's some good, you know, and I do think people have got, gotten too obsessed and addicted to social media. Um, I don't let my kids do it. Um, but Instagram, one of the positives of it is that, you know, I get to put my art on there and get immediate reactions, almost like I'm playing a song for people. You know, you put something up there and they tell you, oh, I love that, or, you know, so you get an instant sort of gratification that wasn't there before you know before we would do the work it was very lonely you know uh, you know i mean uh, sounds sappy but it was you were alone a lot you know so you're always working and i didn't have a family at the time i spent most of my 30s just working in a room you know up out in the country by myself and dating here and there but um it was very isolated you know that's a better word isolated and um, it could drive you crazy, but now, you know, you can put stuff on, get instant feedback. You talk to fellas like yourself, um, you know, people, you can just interact more. So it's a lot different than it was. So I'm grateful for that. Um, so Instagram is the place I usually put my work on. It connects to Facebook or, you know, Facebook. And you know, I try to keep my family stuff more, a little more private. I put some mm -hmm. things on, you know, but, um, but that's generally where I do it. You know, it's like having your own website, really. So absolutely. Well, so I follow me on Ron Garnier on Instagram. I'm going to do it now. I'm on Twitter, sure but I don't go on Twitter because that place needs to be nuked out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm with you. People out there. It's like I remember seeing Star Wars and they said it's a wretched hive of scum and villainy. And that's why, you know, the bar scene. That's what Twitter reminds me of. So many people arguing about the dumbest thing. Hey, welcome back. So, what'd you think? Pretty cool guy, right? Uh, I really enjoy talking to Ron uh, for a couple of reasons. One, look, I, I again, I always appreciate uh, anyone we talk to who's just very uh, forthright and, and very honest. And he was, he was that. I mean, he had no problem telling us like it is. Um, I also really love Berserker as a, as a comic right now. It's one of my favorites. So, to get to talk to him was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, I loved when he said that, uh, you know, he said, well, Keanu Reeves wants to speak to you. And he thought it was sort of being put on. And then he turns on the Zoom and there's Keanu Reeves waiting to talk to him. So uh, that, that had to be quite the moment in his life. And uh, like Joe said, a pleasure to talk to him. Yeah, great, uh, great comic, you know, great career so far. Uh, only more to come from Mr. Garney. And uh, yeah, we get to punch another one out on our Ron frequency card. Um, you know, let us know who, what the next Ron you'd like to see on this program because we're very pro Ron, and that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, we are now at the end of the episode. Please rate, review, and subscribe. We are the Dollar Bin Bandits. Adios. Mm -hmm.